develop a manner of not wanting to gather, especially with the present um, trouble upon the face of the earth, talking about coronavirus. In America presently, you know, many don't want to go back to church. You know, at a point, church, during the lockdown, there was a whole lot of lockdown, you know, in most of the countries locked down and uh, churches were locked down, you know, but right now, churches are supposed to return, that's people are supposed to return back to church. You know, you can lock down the building, you can't lock down church, because church is actually the people, but that's just one of the things they don't understand, but you see, the gathering of ourselves together happens to be one of the commandments that we need to obey in this season. So what I'm trying to make you see is that we are actually obeying a commandment. And blessed are you if you're part, part of the people obeying that commandment. Amen. There is a reward though. You know there's a reward in what we are doing. There's a reward. The reward is change change you know for some change to take place you need to be under a particular atmosphere for some change some kind of circumcision some kind of separation some kind of sanctification to take place I'm a preacher, I'm a teacher, I know these things you need to be on down some kind of atmosphere. And those atmosphere will not come to you alone when you are in the house. It's when we gather together. What I mean alone when you're in the house, even if you're streaming, I want you to understand that we are gathered together, provided your heart is here. Not streaming casually, but streaming with the mind that I am also there. I am in service. That atmosphere comes. And when we, that atmosphere comes when we gather together. When we, when we finish, you go with the blessing of that atmosphere. And can I tell you something? The blessing of that atmosphere will do the work it's supposed to do and eventually will dissipate. You need to come again. That's how it is. You need to gather again for another one. It's just like the ointment upon the head of Aaron. Now, one ointment, when you are anointed, when ointment comes upon your head, after a while, it will dissipate. It will evaporate. You need to come again to, be, to come under the same atmosphere, to come under the anointing. And atmospheres differ. How you know atmosphere is the level of ministration, the level of word that is coming forth because by faith we understand that atmospheres are framed by the word of God. Did you hear what I just said now? Your Bible didn't read it like that. Amen. Okay, give me that please. Now, I want you to check the, that's Hebrews chapter, chapter 11. True faith, we understand that the word, now, I want you to check that word, the word, if you can check either in sword or any other translation, maybe uh, amplified. I want to see the word they use for words, words. By faith, we understand that the world, now you say the universe, we understand that, but I'm going somewhere. Give me another translation. Give me an amplified. Okay. Can you read it out? Ages. Okay. Now that word, ages, is the word aeon in Hebrews. Now aeon 
I mean in Greek. Aeon means not just, um, you know when you say by faith we understand that the world, the world. Now there is Aeon, ages. I want to show you something. Now, the word of God frames not framed not only the world. The word of God framed the world as in the material world. Are you are you understanding what I'm saying? But the word of God also framed the the unseen world or the world that is immaterial. There is that. I don't know whether you understand me. So that word, ages. Of course, when you say ages, ages is not just talking about time past, time present, and future. We understand that. But there are ages within an age. There are ages. Seasons, another way to put it. Seasons are framed by the word of God. Amen. The Bible talked about uh, Joseph. He said he was in chain until his time came. That's what it's called, his time came. Now that time was framed. Give me that place. That was uh, Sam. He sent a man before them, even Joseph. Now, I want you to watch this. If you read the whole psalm, it was talking about the children of Israel and how God delivered them and all of that. He sent a man, Joseph. Now, all of these things have been spoken. The Lord had already said that they were going to go on, they were going to go to the land of Egypt and all of that. You remember, I don't want to go into all of that. Then, when they, it was time, when it's time to bring them out, there's also, but how they will go. By the time God told Abraham how his seed will go to the land of Egypt, I'm sure Abraham never had a clue of how the seed was going to go to the land of Egypt. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And then, those words that have been spoken, those words are the words that framed the seasons that you find for the man Joseph. It was what framed. He sent a man, even Joseph. Give me verse 16. Let me read it. Moreover, he called from a famine upon the land and he brought the staff of bread. All of that was, it was the word that was framing. It was the word that was tampering. The word was framing something. It was the word spoken that they would go to Egypt that brought the famine because if there was no famine they wouldn't have gone to Egypt that's how word frame words frame things are you following me so he called the farmer and he broke the staff of bread then he sent verse 17 he sent a man before him even Joseph who was sold to sold for a servant whose feet they hurt with fetters he was laid in iron until now that word, time, until the time that his word came. Why will you use the word his word came? Until the time that his word came and the word of the Lord tried him. And the king sent and lose him and all of that. You will see that it was just the word doing everything. The word was framing seasons. Seasons of a man's life, the word framing. So when you can now understand what I said when I said that you need to be under certain atmosphere, and how you know how that atmosphere, um, what how uh, the kind of anointing under the atmosphere is the kind of word that is coming. And I want you to understand that the word that is coming has the ability to frame your life. Many of you don't understand that. You've been taken from a path that you would have gone through. 
and you've been initiated into another part, a glorious part. Many of you don't know how you have been delivered from something. Maybe they would have been counting you among certain group of people or even, you know, let me not get, go there. But by reason of the word, by reason of the word, just being here and hearing the word and hearing the word and hearing the word, you don't know the word is framing your life. Framing your life. And we keep framing your life and will frame your life to your marriage. Frame your life to the children you will have. Frame your life because as you're hearing what you're hearing is inheritance, everything is going to be framed after for you to inherit. I didn't hear you say amen. Thank you to press the finny, 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 inf, 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 even, even into the infinite details of your life. Yeah. Even into the infinite details of your life. For they are all in my word. They are all in my word. For I have word and I have words. I have word and I have words. Even words that are calibrated in spheres within me. Even in heights within me. Even in realms within me. For every time I open my mouth and bring a season over you, even a season of my word to you as a person, to you as a church, to you as a generation. I am actually framing even every detail of your life. Every detail of your life is in the words that I speak, even the infinite details, the details of where to live, who to marry, where you will eventually land, even in the natural, but much more in the spirit, are all in my word. Never give attention to my word. For in my word lies your whole existence. In my word lies everything that pertains to your life, from word to word. Because I created all things in the beginning by words. And I still create and form things even now by words. Give attention to my words. Give attention to my words. And that word would frame you frame you. It will frame you. It will frame your details. Even the details of your daily expression. Down to your weekly expression. Down to your monthly expression. Down to your yearly expression. Down to the expression of your natural sojourning. It's all in my word. A word, a word, a word, a word people. I'm raising a word people. I'm raising a word people. Who will use word to come even into a a prophetic existence even in their natural endeavor. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't joke with the words you're hearing and don't joke with meetings because your life is being framed. Now the Lord just told me that one of the warfare we have to fight when Satan fights people, you know he has different ways of fighting. If you are in a place where words of prosperity, natural prosperity, maybe milk of God's word where they teach you prosperity. Yeah, the words also do frame in a manner, you know. But um, when you hear words of everlasting life, words of eternal life, the kind of words you hear here, I mean you receive here, there's a warfare. The warfare, the kind of spirits that fight are basically not demons. They are basically not demons. Can I tell you the kind of spirit? Those spirits that come to take the seed when it is sown, it's called fowls of the air. Those are the kind of spirits that you have to wrestle with. You wrestle with a spirit that would want to take the word. Now, one of the reasons for taking the word is so that you will not be committed to the word. Such spirits are spirits that will make you not to be committed to the word. Well, the word has, has dropped, but not being committed to it, meaning you ignore it, they take it. They don't use it, but it's no more available to you. 
So there are spirits that will want to take the word. They are, they are called fowls of the air. Now, there are also spirits that also cause those fowls of the air. There are also spirits that causes offense. That causes offense. The reason for offense is so that you will stop giving attention to the word. So even when you come physically, you are not there. Your mind is under assault. So those are the kind of, they are, they are spirits that are skillful in warring with people of the word. People of revelation. They are spirits. Those are the kind of spirits you will war with. You know why? Because they know that if you are framed by God's word, you will overcome them. Your, when I say overcome them, your whole life will be defined in such a way that they don't have, it's like saying, the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. They won't have the kind of, what they want is a right of way, an expression. They want you to express something about the fall. They want you to express some measure of sin. They want you to express death. But you're being framed and framed and framed to the point where you are expressing life, constantly expressing life. And I tell you, the end of it is eternal life. So don't joke with what you're hearing. Don't joke with meetings. Don't say meetings are too much or I used to say, by the time you get to heaven, you'll just discover that the only time you spend, well, you know, when somebody dies, you say, we, we, give, uh, uh, we give God glory for the well, life well spent. And the person spent all his life uh, doing PhD, doing masters. He has five ma masters in five fields. He has done two, three PhDs. He's a professor. And then he died while he was doing a professor of, of anthropology, and then they, I remember one man like that, very funny man. He's a businessman, very wealthy businessman, very wealthy trader. And he was, he was, he was almost in his 50s. He was very successful. So he went and did jump. He did jam. He wanted to go to law school. And then paid his way through. Somebody took the jam, uh, uh, did jam for him. And then he passed. And then he went to law school. Of course, you know how that kind of person will finish law school. All the lecturers were happy when he was there. He took care of all the lecturers. And they were happy that such a man came to school. You know, some of you are dry. It's only your school fees you have when you come to school. But this one, he had a pocket full of money. And then he distributed money when he was. And then they were happy. So one day, I happened to know this man personally. So one day I was in a place where we are just asking him a question. One, one, of, the, one of us asked him a question. He said, say, why? Why? Did, why did you go to, I said, you're successful, you, you are a very big businessman, you build houses, you, 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 you know, I think he has children, his children should have been the one, so they asked him, sir, why, did, why are you troubling yourself? You know what he said? I want you to see death. You know what he said? He said he wants that when he dies, they will bury him with the You know, the, the wig and the gown of a barrister. And then he doesn't want his name. He said he's a businessman. He wants money. He said he doesn't want chief. He said he doesn't want chief in his name. He doesn't want late chief. What he wants is late barrister. And then maybe Esquire. And that was what made him go, go to school. You're laughing. The reason why you're laughing is because you understand that there is something 
much better. Hallelujah. But for him, he has achieved so much in the natural, and then he felt, I need to have a name before I leave this earth. And he chose the name he wanted, and he paid for the name, and he got it before he died. And after the school, he died. And then he was buried like that, and he was satisfied. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So even as you're hearing the words you're hearing in Sunday school, I also want you to know that God is framing not only you, but he's also framing your generations after you. You know, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, of the joints and the marrow. Now, what can pierce the soul and the spirit? What will it do to the genetic formation of a man? Your physical, your physical, your physical genetic formation, the word of God can tamper with it. Now, uh, genetic modification is not something, when science, when they began to separate genes and all of the modified genes, they are like, they, God doesn't need to get test tube and all of that, just needs to speak the word. And for your information, he gave us that word of reconciliation. So as we are speaking, your genes are being tampered with. Your gene is being formed. Something is being put into you. We are doing it the right way. We are doing it by faith. Your soul is, is, is coming into a lifestyle that will cause your... We don't need to dissect, take something from your body, try to... No, you are coming into, by hearing, something is happening to you. Your gene is being modified. And the kind of person you will be in the next... 10 years, in the next 5 years, is being done right now by the word of God. It's being framed by the word of God. As you see me so now, what will frame you? I'm a product of God's word. I am purely a product of God's word. Now what will frame me? Now what will hedge me in? Where I know if he come out, do anything where I won't do. I mean, I like the way where they hedge me in. Now what will imprison me? Amen. And now word will go frame me until I lay hold on eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 